you run a dog training or dog walking business, then this episode of Fix Your Business is definitely going to be for you. We'll be talking about how to potentially double your turnover in your business uh, within a shorter space of time as possible. So on uh, Fix Your Business today, I've got um, Rachel Cathorn. I had to be careful because I did get pronounced the name wrong earlier on. So I'll remember that. So Rachel runs a successful dog walking and training business that's just over one years old. So welcome to the show, Rachel. Thank you. Excellent. So we're going to be digging into your, into your business, obviously, and giving you a bit of advice about kind of how you uh, productize dog walking and dog training package it up and hopefully sell it for more than what you're currently selling it at. And I've already talked off, off air about some of kind of the, the um, stories and beliefs and patterns that you're already starting to kind of uh, using that are stopping you from growing your business. So, but for the, um, the benefit of the viewers, why don't you just give us a quick sort of potted history about how you came to setting up the business in the first place? So I always volunteered as a dog trainer um, and it got to stage the normal, you hate your job, you think, no, I want to change my career. So yeah, last year I decided to start up my own business, um, Rachel's Rambles. I already had lots of people coming to me asking for dog help, um, but I just did it on the, like for free for friends. Um, yeah, and so far so good, it's been successful. I've had clients from day one, lots of recommendations. Um, in touch with other dog walkers in the area and dog trainers but now I feel I've just got to the point where it's I have the same income every month and it's it's great it's fine because I never thought I'd be at this point anyway um but you know you want to earn more you want to grow your business and I want to grow it in a way that I'm not exhausting myself I'm doing it the smarter way <laughs> that's it so we, we had kind of a, a brief sort of discussion about um what your capacity was at currently because kind of so one of the first questions i asked you was um you know do you have capacity to take on more clients at the moment and your answer was yes <laughs> and then we talked about okay so what does your average day look like you know how much time would you say you've got spare and the answer for that was not at all no. not at all <laughs> so this, this is obviously quite a common um sort of dilemma or quandary which a lot of um and especially in sort of the dog walking dog training industries is that we're we we kind of um fall ourselves into thinking that the only way to grow our business is to get more clients but then actually when we look at it we don't have the time to service more clients yeah. um so for you at the moment it's like you know we, your your earnings capacity at the moment is kind of capped by your ability to be able to deliver more training workshops and things like that yeah um one of the other things, so we were, we were running through kind of the pricing of your sort of programs, and I'm just going to jump onto a screen share um, momentarily, because this is quite important, I feel. So these are my notes, so hopefully, hopefully you can read them, hopefully the viewers will be able to sort of translate them as well. So um, a couple of things that you mentioned at the start were about sort of marketing, can we get more clients? We've kind of just spoken about that very briefly, but you know, um, how do I say no to people as well? It sounds like you're taking on work for the sake of taking on work because there's this driver to get more money. But then we were looking at the pricing which you're currently charging. So you charge £10 for a group walk and then £8 for a 30 minute solo walk. And then you have a group, group classes and group training running at the moment, which is £80 for six sessions or six weeks. Um, and then your one-to-one -one is £25 for a uh, half hour mm -hmm. and £45 um, for a full hour. And obviously one of the things which you're doing at the moment is you're selling your consultations at your hourly rate. Yes. Which, just, just walk us through, what's the process around kind of putting together a consultation with a, a client? Um, so the person contacts me, it's usually through social media to be fair, that's quite a lot where I get a lot of my business from. Um, and uh, I book in a discovery call so we can talk to them and discuss their training needs, like um, what is it, is it something that they exactly want to pinpoint or, or, or a behaviour they're struggling with. Um, and then from there we book in a one-to-one -one session. They get some feedback notes and things like that. And then I say to them whether they need, this is a bit more of a serious problem than just one hour. You know, you might need some more support. Um, and that's where we potentially look into more training sessions. Um, but to be honest, at me as a, like a business owner, if you like, that is where I get stuck and I struggle to sell myself and go, oh, well, you need to book, you know, six sessions. Because I'm always like, oh my God, are they going to buy six sessions? Like, 
they're just going to want two and they're not going to want six off me. And then I've just got six weeks and like, what the hell do I, you know? Yeah. So that's what goes through my mind a bit. <laughs> so, so let's try and break it down a little bit. So for, we'll do, we'll deal with the consultation side of it first and then we'll look at how you go about selling a, a follow up package afterwards. So okay. the, the initial consultation, so it sounds like it's, it's not just one hour of your time. It's like, you've got to show up, like drive there. You've got to deliver the consultation. You've got some notes to write up afterwards, obviously drive home as well. Potentially there might be a follow up call where then you might sell them something else. They've already had a 15 minute call to start off with. Uh -huh. You start, that sounds like several hours work. So actually your hourly rates more like sort of, it's not 45 pounds for an hour. It's 10 pounds an hour or something like that. Or, you know, best case 15 pounds an hour. Yeah. And what you might find is then also by the time you start to factor in things like well, travel generally, but also doing marketing and sales and all of the other bits of business, your bookkeeping and et cetera, et cetera. Like actually, if you worked out what your hourly rate is, you'd probably be like, <gasps> it's like six pounds an hour or something. Yeah. <laughs> Go and earn more money working in Waitrose. Um, yeah. And it'd be a bit disappointing. So we've got to start to create a business model that is going to work better for your business. Okay. So your target monthly turnover was um, 2K. Yep. Right. So go back to my screen share. So we start, we always start off with our, our goal in mind and then we work backwards from that. Okay. So, cause otherwise what happens is, or this is what most business owners do. They go about their sort of daily life with their business, doing all of these random sort of tasks with no real sense of direction. And you know, um, it ends up just being like you'll just be jumping around like to, you know going from one thing to the next no real sense of direction get to the end of the day and think i've collected some money that's okay that'll do but there's no real like idea you haven't kind of got a concrete like purpose when you wake up in the morning basically yeah. um and this is it's perfectly normal this is what a lot of business owners do the one mistake which they do make at this point is they don't look at these tasks each month and go actually was it worthwhile doing that task if it wasn't then I shouldn't, I shouldn't have done it and I certainly shouldn't do it moving forward. And so what you start to see is then you've got these um, tasks which then um, are more specific and are going to push you towards your goal quicker because you're doing fewer things. So it's like, you know, if you put 12.5% of, of your energy into eight things, are any of those eight things going to work out? Probably mm. not because you're only putting a fraction of the energy in. So the more energy we can give specific tasks, the better. So... What we want to do, though, is we want to have in mind your goal, which is initially £2,000 a month. And it could potentially be 5 k a month or even 10 k a month, potentially longer term. But let's hit 2 k first, and then we can start to kind of grow it from there. So at the moment with that, you know, if you're earning like £10 an hour, well, there's only 200 hours a month generally when you can work if you work on a basis of, sort of nine to five monday to friday is like 200 hours so you're already kind of even if you were at like full capacity earning that money every single hour that you're at work we've always already established you're not so we've got to design a business that is going to sort of start to get you there a little bit quicker so um essentially business kind of works in a number of different ways so down at the bottom here, you'll have like, there'll be, so somebody messages you on Facebook and says, Hey, I've seen your page. I see you do dog walking, or maybe they've been referred to you. Can you help us out? You know, Fido's playing up or, uh -huh. you know, we can't, we, we've got to go back to work. Fido needs to walk. So then you'll reply to it. And quite often people will give, give them the price at this point without any education. And then you'll never hear from them again. Okay. So do you do that? I try not to, because honestly, from what you have said before a few videos that I've watched I give them a bit of an insight as to what my walks are about um or what my training is about and my methods and stuff like that and then see if they respond and then when they do they I kind of ignore the question if they go and how much is it I go more into this is what I do and then usually I'll buy the second message I've told them <laughs> right you know, I, well just still shouldn't give them the price on there because right. one of the things which you have got and i can't remember what you've called it but you've got that initial sort of call 15 minute call consultation call yeah so you got the 15 minute consult call where you're then going to book them onto a consultation mm -hmm. and eventually what's going to happen is you're going to sell them a package okay so we've got this now a bit of a customer journey designed for you. And if you start giving people the, the price, you know, at the wrong step, 
it's going to it's going to break this and you're not yeah. going to be able to kind of move them up through the, the scales of initiative and also like whilst you're selling um you know uh so we have the consultation so you're currently selling it 45 pounds for an hour uh -huh. um I've worked with dog trainers, dog behaviorists who are um, selling those initial consultations. So they, they have a very specific target market. So they'll be breed specific. So they know the dogs inside and out and their problems and challenges. Um, and then they've got a very specific solution, you know, to that, to whatever problems it is that they're exhibiting. So they'll charge in excess of like 500. I know some dog trainers will be charging 850 pounds for a just a consultation phase of their process. Now it's not just an hour time block that they're selling at 850 pounds. They stack a lot of value in there. So they'll have maybe several follow-ups. They'll have a bit of um, remote support. They'll have a much more in-depth um, report, which they give to them and various other things like that before they then move them onto the package. Um, but it's super specific in terms of market and product, which they're selling. So you think about it this way, you've got to find 20 clients to sell a consultation to for every one that they sell their consultation to. Yeah. One of the challenges which you mentioned to me was this about, can I say no to people? Okay. So that person has learned to say no to 19 people in order to yeah. get the one perfect client who they can help. And all day long, they're getting inquiries, you know, a dash hound owner, or sorry, a dash hound specialist. He's getting inquiries from lurchers and Labrador dog owners or people who, who don't have, maybe they've got, um, maybe they're a behaviorist, you know, specialist in separation anxiety. And so they don't take on necessarily the, the lower sort of level stresses and anxieties that, that the dogs have. They're super specific in terms of what they're doing. So they can afford to say no to the 19 people who don't fit the market or product niche. Yeah. For that one perfect client. What's your, what sort of feelings are coming up when I say to you that you could say no and turn down a client? Um, my first thing is, is probably finding my niche. Like, you know, you said like there's uh, the lady who does dashes or separation anxiety and things like that. I do find a lot of staffy owners come to me and lurcher owners because I own one of them myself. I own staff and a lurcher. So, um, I get a lot of inquiries from them, maybe because I could be really relatable, I guess, but yeah, I don't suppose I've got a... A niche mine's more just well, I suppose maybe pet dog training but um yeah I'm not a specialist in any area if you like I'm just a general pet dog owner trainer <laughs> and imagine, <laughs> imagine if imagine if there's a staffy dog owner out there and you're putting out content marketing wise all of the time which is talking about staffies do you think mm -hmm. that that content is going to speak to that dog owner yes yeah. yeah, most people's concern or fear is that there's not enough staffy dog owners out there to, you know, to, for there to be enough custom out there in order to, you know, satisfy their business, basically. Okay. So, but actually, I bet if you look at it, there's probably hundreds or thousands of staffy owners. You're based down in sort of Essex, which is pretty well populated, southeast mm -hmm. of the UK. You know, I bet there's thousands of people out there with staffies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I do see a lot of my walks around the town. Um, yeah, and not only that, but now you're an expert in staffies, there'll be people up in Liverpool who will see your YouTube videos about staffies and go, well, we can't travel down to see you, but can we do a session on Zoom or can we just have a consultation with you? And they'll be, because you're an expert, you're, you've positioned yourself as an expert, you know, now all of a sudden, if you're selling a consultation for 250 quid, because that person's desperate to work with you, you know, it's like, well, that's five times the value right there. Yeah. Which, you know, what's the difference though? What's changed? Not a lot. It's, no. just, it's just what we call your ability to articulate your value. Yeah. I, if, if you're there saying I'm an expert in, in staffies and lurchers and all lurchers, but let's just stick with staffies. I'm an expert in staffies. I only work with staffy dogs. You know, you'll get people from all over the world. Like, you know, my friend who runs the, the Dash and training business, she's yeah. got clients all over the world. Yeah. I guess so, uh, it's, it's slightly nervous to say that I'm an expert in the area. That could, you know, be self doubt almost. Okay. Oh, that's um, interesting. But, but how many, so how many staffies have you worked with? Uh, probably about five or six okay. since starting my business last year. So training wise. Did you, how many of them did you get good results with? Uh, all of them. <laughs> yeah. So there's your evidence. 
Yeah. Yeah. So fear comes from this whole thing of things being much worse in imagination than they are in reality. Yeah. And we will search out, like in reality for things to back up the stories that we tell ourselves. So if we start saying, I'm not an expert, we'll go out and look for evidence that backs up with we're not an expert. And you actually have to just stop that, like to say, actually, I'm going to go out and look for evidence that is the opposite of that. So okay. that simple exercise, which I did with you is how many staffies you've worked with? How many have you managed to help all of them? Yeah. You're an expert in staffies. Um, you know, some people could define it by how many qualifications you've got and all this sort of stuff. But ultimately, if you can get the re desired result and outcome, which is to stop staffies from being aggressive towards other dogs. <laughs> yeah. That, and you can do that consistently. Mm -hmm. That makes you an expert in my opinion. Okay. So we go out and gather evidence to back up the message that we're starting to put out. So it's about specificity. But going back to my, my little diagram here. So now all of a sudden, if you're, you know, we'll, we'll scratch you doing, we're not going to no longer be going to be doing 45 pound an hour consultations. So you, your consultation won't just jump to 250 quid. Right? Yeah. It's, it's a process of testing and validating, test and validate. So what I would suggest is, your consultation price needs to go up to well I, I, let's play a game actually so um tell me at what point i'm going to start increasing the numbers tell me at what point it starts to get uncomfortable okay so okay. 60 pounds 75 pounds 90 pounds 120 pounds probably there right, okay so that's the price you need to go for with your consultations okay so we'll we're, we're going to scratch that. We're going to now sell our consultations for 120 pounds. Okay. Which is nearly three times the price of what you were selling them at currently. And what's going to happen is I'm going to challenge you to pitch the next 10 to 20 people who come along who want to work with you. You're going to pitch them a consultation at 120 pounds. Okay. okay. Now I can guarantee that your conversion rate will be somewhere between one in five and one in three. So at the first 10, somewhere between two, three or four people are still going to say yes to this. I can guarantee it. If they don't, I'll pay you 250 quid. Right? I'm that confident. But right. what's going to happen is the first eight are going to say no. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the last two annoying buggers who are going to say yes. Okay. Because clients are like buses, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you've got to go through that painful process over the next four to six weeks, pitching 10 to 20 people at your new consultation rate. You'll get more rejection, more no's, but we've just established you can have a third of the clients and still make the same money from the consultations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And at that price, let's say, for example, if you're doing, um, uh, I don't know, um, five consultations a month. Okay. So we'll take that. Let's just get rid of that for a second. So we're doing five consultations at 120 pounds a month. Uh, sorry, 120 pounds each. So per month. Can't write now. <laughs> <laughs> Where it all goes horribly wrong. There we go. So for each month, five consultations, 120 pounds. So that equals 600 pounds a month worth of revenue just from consultations uh -huh. now already. So that's five hours of your time, plus all the, the meandering travel and writing reports and things like that, but you're getting paid a bit more for it, but that's half your revenue that you're already making each month, just in consultations alone. Yeah. Okay. So I would suggest you could do nothing different, but sell your consultations for 120 quid and get to 2k. Okay. Right. Uh -huh. How do you feel about that so far? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, maybe I just don't see that many people that need my help or how, I don't how know. How many consultations did you do say in August? Um, I did one ongoing client. So she booked six sessions with me, um, but that was from a consultation and I probably did three, three other consultations. Okay, so four consultations then, basically, but one was from ex an existing client, really. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're not far off getting getting five there, and again, it might just be a matter of I don't want to go right the way through your sort of marketing funnel necessarily, because I it's one of those things I talk about like the um, uh, I compare businesses to like a rattly old Fiat 500 engine, 
like at the moment your pricing and pricing and the way you've designed your products is a bit broken so we've got to fix that first uh -huh. so that when we then add rocket fuel i.e marketing into that that engine now it's finely tuned it's now a rocket engine your business is just going to explode but we've got to get you confidently selling your product same product for more basically yeah. first so it, but even if we had four clients there who paid 120 quid for that initial consultation that would have been originally it'd been about 180 quid's worth of revenue under my new pricing structure you've got 480 pounds worth of revenue three times close to four times the revenue yeah yeah so it's it, you know that that will make a big difference to you you take an extra 400 quid a month wouldn't you yeah <laughs> i wouldn't turn it down right so the second part of the question you asked was about how do i sell it like i'm not very confident about selling it so talk, talk to me a bit about that that sort of what's going on there. um i mean I'm, I'm quite good at talking to people and things like that people always say i'm um, you know approachable and everything but it's just i guess it is the nose like sometimes i have been turned down because of my prices and if you were saying they're already cheap that's kind of what then goes oh well if i'm already cheap and people are turning me down um but yeah it's just to be able to you know confidently say that yeah these are my prices this is take it or leave it kind of yeah. thing <laughs> so you can act for, first little tip you can do it without even saying take it or leave it it's just this these are my prices that's you know I'm, yeah I'm good at what i do i'm an expert if you want to get great results like we, you know we work together this is the package that i'm recommending for you so you've got to say it with some level of authority and confidence mm -hmm. Um, but there was one thing which she said there, which was about um, all oh, people are already saying it's too expensive at the existing price. So, you know, if I put it up, are even more people going to say no? Well, um, again, this is about evidence. Like if I were to say to you, well, how do you know people are going to say, you know, how, how, how do you know people aren't going to say yes at 120 quid? You don't know because you haven't pitched it at 120 pounds. Mm. That's why I'm challenging you rather than what you've done is you've created a story for yourself you've gone out to find evidence and that evidence looks like people currently saying no at your existing prices. Yeah. You've got no evidence for it at 120 pounds. So actually you kind of like that, that story and that belief you created for yourself isn't true. Yeah. Fair enough. If you pitch 20 people at 120 quid and they all say no, I'd, I'd eat my words and I'd give you some cash. I, I mean that genuinely, but I know that there is a market out there for people, for experts like you for selling consultations at 120 pounds. I'm confident. Okay. What, so what happens during the sales conversation then? So in that 15 minute call, you've talked about, um, you know, your, your business and their, their dog and the challenges they're having. And you get to that point of you pitch them the, the consultation. So okay. imagine we're now pitching it at 120 pounds and that person says, Oh gosh, that's expensive. What do you normally find yourself saying? Uh, <laughs> I can see, I can hear you now going, what, what are you going to say? <laughs> um, I'd probably go, let's look into uh, like a course or a program that we can put onto. And if ever so, or many sessions are booked, we can look into a, a discount or something. Okay. We're just talking about at the moment, because again, we're not selling them the package yet. We're going to do the consultation. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. And then from the consultation, that's the point where you'll upsell them a package of, of you know, a program of training sessions afterwards. So we're just, just for now, we're just focusing on the 120 pounds consultation. To be fair, the, the people that have said no so far, I've just gone, okay, but you've, you've got my details. So if you do struggle later on, like you can always message me like and, and inquire again. Um, so I have kind of accepted that, you know, this is my price at the moment, but yeah. I think with the 120, yeah, I'd be going, I oh, know it's slightly expensive. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so you're a bit <laughs> apologetic. Okay, right. So is it okay to reflect something back to you? Yes, of course. Okay. So most people, when they sell, it's normally a reflection of their own value systems. So if if 120 pounds was expense, if you were to go and buy something for 120 pounds, that might feel expensive to you. Yeah. Um, so what's happening is you're attaching emotionally to the sale based on your own value system. Got ya. But I yeah. find it too expensive. Therefore other people will find it too expensive. So you've got to find a way and it's not easy, but you've got to find a way to kind of detach from that emotional side of 
you know that that value system there and you can you can it can be expensive over here but your business to get to 2k a month needs you to be rock solid and be like no 120 pounds is a bargain yeah like it's this, this is the best thing for you and your dog like that's why i'm recommending the consultation if i didn't think i could help you i wouldn't be recommending my consultation but if we if you want to work with me and start to listen to the tonality which i'm using here as well if you want to work with me and you want your dog to stop barking at the postman let's book the consultation when can you do it yeah it's all about you want this you yeah. want your dog to stop doing this i'm the person that can give it to you let's go yeah it's it's much more so don't forget you're the expert your clients need you more than you need them mm -hmm. okay because what's what's also happening there is if you're if you're attached to that, that yes and the no, because you need that 45 pounds from the consultation because you need to pay your rent and you need mm. to put food on your table. Now, all of a sudden you're not operating in your client's best interests. Yeah. It's all about Rachel and paying for Rachel's life. So that's one of the best things about if you can get control of the pricing side of things and charge a bit more, um, it gives you a bit of extra flexibility and freedom to like, it's, it's all of a sudden you're making more money. So it's no longer about you. It's just like you can pick and choose who you work with. Yeah. It gives you more time to offer a better quality product, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, so let's think about sort of some of the objections you might get. So they might just turn around bl flat blunt, go that's expensive. Okay. Mm -hmm. The best weapon in your armory when you get that objection, cause it's never about price, never about price. Right? The best question you can ask somebody is what do you mean? And they might say something like, oh, you know, I've noticed Dave down the road charges like two pounds for his consultation. It's that's like, super, yeah, but Dave's not qualified with the IMDT. Dave's doing this on this, as a side hustle. Um, actually, have you seen the reviews on his website? Yeah. <laughs> so go and spend two quid with Dave, but Dave doesn't know what he's doing. Okay. Or you can come and spend 120 pounds. Somebody knows exactly what they're doing. And actually, I tell you what, if we get to the end of the consultation and I give you the report and you actually don't feel you've had value for money out of that process, I'll just refund you the money. And you can then go and take that money and spend it with Dave if you want to. So what we've done is it's something called a risk reversal or we're kind of de-risking it for them. So you, um, what it does is it focuses them on whether they want the product or not. Right. So they've got nowhere to go now. They're kind of like, oh, well, she's just told me she's going to give me the money back if it's shit. So it's kind of a no brainer. Why wouldn't they spend 120 quid with you? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Only what will happen is if they're just not bought into you or not bought into the process and that's absolutely fine. They'll just walk away anyway, despite the fact you've just said, I'll give you your money back if you don't get it. Yeah. So it's, you know, so think about like what sort of questions you could ask somebody to kind of loop them back around on, you know, um, like, so that, that one, which is, what do you mean? And they'll start giving you a whole load of excuses. Well, great. If you're worried about investing 120 quid, totally get it. It's a lot of money. Um, you know, they might want to go and speak to the husband or wife or partner or whatever. And that's, that's cool too. But just, you know, let me talk about what, so what's going to happen with Fido then if your husband says, no, we're not spending 120 quid and he's still barking at the postman. Mm. Yeah. You're still going to moan about it, the dog barking, barking at the postman. Like what are you going to do then? So you can start to kind of get them focused on the problem again. Yes. And, and it becomes not about the price. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you got any questions for me at this point? Um, none so far. I don't think so. No. <laughs> so, what are you going to say? So, if so, let's say for example, I was a client, and I've just said to you, "Oh God," and you've just pitched me the hundred and twenty pound consultation, and I say, "Oh, Rachel, it's a bit more expensive." And I was thinking, what are you going to say to me? Um, what do you mean? <laughs> Great question. Um, uh, and uh, also just maybe it can always be like, you know, if, if it's not right right now, this month, I'm always available next month. Like, you no. know, no. Okay. No. Okay. No. So again, in that, in that, cause otherwise oh. what's happening is you're, you're kind of letting them off the hook. Yeah. 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 I see what and you that, mean straight away. You, you, when you're buying stuff, like to be let off the hook. Yeah. Yeah. But in this instance, because they've got a dog which has a, a problem, challenge, needs help, an issue which it needs help with, some kind of anxiety or problem, and you know you can help them, you've got to get them refocused on the problem. You say, right. 
what do you mean? Okay, well, actually, I don't, I don't have the money, or it's more, more money than I was thinking it was. Well, that's great, but obviously, like, if we were to take money out of the picture, mm-hmm. this is another way of handling that objection. If we take money out of the picture, um, what do you, do you do? You understand the process of the consultation? Do you think it's going to be helpful? And I'll probably go, yeah, that sounds fantastic, great. So you told me at the start of the consultation that like you get really anxious at quarter past nine every morning because you can hear the footsteps of the postman and you know the dog's going to go absolutely mental and you have this race to get there before he shreds all the letters every morning. We can, I need to assess the situation, which is what that consultation is about. And I can start to give you a bit of a a plan, a strategy for you taking control of that and training the dog to stop it. We can also look at further training sessions, but this is the start of the process to stop Fido from tearing the post up and barking every, you know, every morning at quarter past nine. Mm-hmm. oh yeah when you say it like that yeah it's very different to kind of either letting people off the hook or feeling like you've got to justify yourself yeah I think that's it I think that's it actually yeah like I have to justify my prices like you know I charge this much because I do this 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 and this and this and then sometimes if I feel like I've it's too much I then just add something else on so I do this 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 and this yeah so yeah you know, and then another way is just, you, you mentioned it before. I mean, it's, it's 120 quid. So I would hope that most people could afford that. If they can't afford 120 pounds, they're going to struggle to pay for an ongoing series of training sessions. Mm. Um, you know, they might be more appropriate if, if the challenge with the dog isn't big enough to come into the group workshops or th- something like that. But, um, uh, you know, you could also say to them, well, listen, if, if it's literally the fact you don't, you want to do this, but you don't have 120 quid, you know, why don't we split it down into two payments? Could you do sixty pounds now and then sixty pounds on the on the day, or the okay. day before? Ideally, for consultations, you want payment in, in advance, yes. or, you know, in full, because you don't want no shows and things like that happening. It, get, it gets people committed, so you could potentially split it up into a couple of payments if you wanted to. Okay. You know, or or you could say to them, well, listen, if this is going to be, you know, it might be that it's middle of the month, they're running a bit short. Well, how about let's book the session in today. So that that's in the diary. I'll send you the invoice, um, but you pay on payday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But again, what's happening is you're giving them like really clear instructions on what the next steps are in your process. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I've I've given you a little like sales masterclass like 101 in about a space of about five or ten minutes there. What's going to happen is you'll then sit the consultation. And then I'm going to go back to my terrible diagram again. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody can read the, the words on it. So then we're kind of going to get into the territory of the packages. Okay. So yeah. we've done the consultation next stage at the end of the consultation or after the consultation, we'll then sell them a package. Now actually do the consultation and Fido's, you know, post shredding antics are like worse than you thought. And it's going to, he's a, he's a bit of an old dog anyway. So he's going to, you know, going to take him a while to teach him, you know, how to behave when the postman starts walking down the drive and things like that. So, but the packages, which you want to be selling are, um, it's what I call the one, two or three pack. So silver, gold or platinum, you know, and it depends on the severity of the issue, but Fido you reckon could be fixed. If you had a weekly training session for two or three months, you reckon you could have it licked. Mm-hmm. Okay, but what you sell them is not two hundred pounds a month or forty five pound a session or whatever it looks like. You sell them a three month program that by the end of it will have Fido, you know, sitting quietly looking up at the owner, you know, every time the postman comes along because we've we've got it solved. You know, dad's happy. Fur baby's dad is happy because there's no barking or you know his his post is in one piece. Um, so we sell them a package, a three-month package that's six hundred pounds. Okay. Yeah. So it's one training session a week for twelve weeks. At the end of it, fighters are going to be good as gold. And hey, presto, maybe we'll, we'll fix a couple of other issues along the way as well as a Brucey bonus. Okay. But we get them focused on one specific problem. So we start to then sell packages at six hundred pounds. Now again, it might be that it's, it's a three-month program, so you could say, well, it's two hundred pounds a month for three months. So mm-hmm. you can split it down but you're selling them a specific package with specific outcomes and results. Okay. And obviously if you then did twice a week or three times a week, if the issue is more severe, which it might be in some cases, you know, um, 
separation anxiety for example that's just absolutely like you know destroying the dog that could be like a two pack or three packs so two or three sessions a week until the problem's resolved and that could be as much as 1200 pounds or even 1800 pounds and again people will hear those big numbers and go oh my gosh that's expensive and this that and the other but um imagine this scenario where you're doing like four or five consultations a month so you're getting a few hundred pounds in and you've got maybe one or two or three clients on just your one one or two pack already but then every now and then a client drops in and says yeah you know what i can see there's a whole load of issues here we want you to resolve all of them we'll go for your three pack and it's 1800 quid mm -hmm. okay your goal was 2000 you could sell one consultation a month and one platinum package and you've hit your goal that's one client a month yeah okay but it it takes time for you to gradually you know eke up and start to sell bigger packages for more money and things like that so uh -huh. like i said take the consultations for example we've agreed you and i've agreed you're going to start selling those at 120 quid each yep okay so you got to take take the prices off your website for now because we're going to be practicing your prices uh -huh. it's important because one of the challenges you'll face is you set your pitch at 120 quid and somebody will say oh but i saw it on your website it's 45 pounds so yeah take the price whilst we're testing prices take your prices off your website okay really important next 10 or 20 people pitch at 120 pounds when you've sold like three four five of them i want you to consider putting up to 150. okay when you've sold three four five of them at 150 start thinking about putting up to 180. so we're gradually gonna as your confidence grows we'll gradually increment that price and you'll sell them for more and more well uh only one question um with regards to um quite a lot of people get i get recommended from people that i've helped so they go oh so you helped my friend and they've recommended me to you if i'm then starting increasing my prices every four to five and they'll go well you sold it to a thingy for 120 now why am i 150. <laughs> just say you know I'm, I'm full to capacity i'm good at what i do you know my coach has told me to put my prices up all right okay <laughs> it doesn't matter don't feel you've got to justify it just make it matter of fact to say uh, yeah um or or if you were worried about it you could just you could just say um do you know what actually yeah i'll honor jane's price if that's what jane told you it was i'm happy to honor that okay you know so that then there's no problem with that you don't lose any face either by you know you probably get more goodwill by kind of just saying yeah i'll go i'll go for that one um I mean, you're not going to be putting your prices up every five minutes. It's probably going to be like every four to six weeks you'll get as your confidence builds and you pitch for, you know, 10 to 20 people over four to six weeks. Mm -hmm. Confidence builds, we sell four or five, then I'll put my price up. So it's not like you'd be changing it every day. It's going to gradually increment sort of on a monthly, bi-monthly basis. Okay. I, I would focus to make it, make life easy for yourself. I would focus just on the pricing for the consultation initially. Okay. Don't worry too much about the packages because you'll sell some packages anyway. Um, but you can use similar techniques as you learn through applying it to the consultations. You'll start to learn the techniques which you can then apply to your packages as well. Yes. But I'll leave you my parting words with for you will be throughout your sales process, assume a position of leadership. Mm -hmm. Don't let the client say to you, oh, well, I only want to book one session. If you're sat there and little Fido's like tearing the post up and you're like, that, that dog needs four sessions, you've got to sell that client four sessions or be prepared to walk away. Okay. Because if you're selling them one session, it's to satisfy your own needs to make money. Yes. And, and at all times, you need to be operating within oh. the dog and the, and the owner as well, but within the dog's best interests. Yeah. Um, and, and clients will try everything they possibly can to try and tell you what they think they need. And a lot of the time it's wrong. And you've yeah. kind of got to just ignore that and just say, no, no, I'm really sorry, Mr. Smith, but from what I've seen, what you, what we discussed in your initial assessment and what I've seen in the consultation, we need at least eight sessions because it's, it's quite a severe problem. Mm -hmm. you no, know, that is going to be close to 400 pounds, but by the end of it, I, I can't guarantee anything, but I'm pretty confident based on what I've seen, the dogs I've worked with in the past that we can resolve that issue. You know, but it's eight sessions over over eight weeks, so we can split that down into two payments if you want to. Okay. Oh, but can't we just try four and see how it goes? 
no, no, I think you're missing the point here. It's, it's eight sessions. That's what he needs. Yeah. Yeah. So it can almost be like, you know, it's eight sessions and then we can see at the end of it where we are. Yeah. Like, you know, if he still needs more, if it's even more behavioural or if we've completed what we're after. But eight sessions is the minimum that this dog needs kind of thing. Yeah. And you're, you, you've also got to get into the habit of with your, your walking clients, unfortunately, are kind of taking the mickey a little bit because you're yeah. doing training with them whilst you're out on the walks. Yeah. You're not really paying for that. Not at those prices anyway. So I, I, would, I would consider having a training walk price, which mm-hmm. is close to double your normal walk price. Right. Okay. Okay. So normal walk, just take them out, you know, give them a good stretch of the legs and come back. No training training walk is now double the price of what it was last week yeah because I, I find that a bit like my dog walking clients because it was just started up you know as as a, uh, a kind of a way to learn as well about dogs behavior different dogs and everything like that learning from each individual um, but now I find a lot of the dog walks does take up a lot of my day and then I've got to do all my training elements in an evening because I've booked up my day for you know dog walking so um yeah you might have to look at prices of dog walks <laughs> <laughs> definitely and and it might be you know so um well ha- have a think about it and you can always kind of fire back to me in the group either in pet professional network or in confidently charge more group um you know once you've had a chance to kind of process today's session which hopefully has been enjoyable yes a bit of a very good. um you know and keep us posted with your progress as well share your wins so if you do go out and sell a consultation for three times the price let everybody know talk about it and share that with us i'd really appreciate it i would do cool right we're there we're at the end of it we did go over a little bit i'm afraid so we're a bit beyond five o'clock but um if you're watching this and you want a bit of help in terms of fixing your pet professional business or any business for that matter that um involves um some kind of a service which you want to productize or involves clients and customers that may be uh, 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 pulling you around rather than you being able to um, make it work for yourself better. If you want to increase your turnover, then uh, drop me a line. Um, uh, we're always looking for guests for Fix Your Business. And obviously what we'll also do is we will share Rachel's details. Um, so you can go and check out uh, so, uh, Rachel's Rambles. Uh, you're on Facebook, aren't you? You've got a Facebook page, you've got Instagram, and also we'll share the website address as well. So if anybody's down in Essex and wants some help with their dog, obviously you can go and speak to Rachel too. Uh, Rachel, um, hopefully that was enjoyable. It's been a real pleasure. Yeah, an eye-opener. You know, for, I've, like I said before, I've never owned a business, so actually talking to somebody that, you know, knows how businesses work and knows how to make money and, you know, make it the most successful business you can. Because I think that's the goal at the end of the day. I want my business to be successful. You know, I don't just want to five years time go, that was the worst experience of my life. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, so it's been really interesting, really interesting. Awesome. I'm pleased to hear it. And what will happen is you're going to get a bug for this when you hit 2000. And I say when, not if, but when you hit 2000 pound a month in terms of turnover, you'd be like, I want more. How do I get more? And it will keep on escalating from there. But you'll, you'll have, if you apply some of the principles you've learned today, you'll have everything you need to go up to 3k, 4k, 5k and beyond. Ace. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you so much. (laughs)